Hello everyone, uh, I know that at this point you have been playing a few games, um, I also know you have a lot of questions, um, I know you're having trouble to deliver checkmate, uh, but that's okay, all I need you to be doing at this point is playing and getting, getting the hang of capturing your opponent's pieces, that's it. If you are taking it a step further and you're actually paying attention to your opponent's moves every time, that's even better. But again, all I need you to be doing is to play, develop your pieces, and try to capture anything that comes your way. So that way you develop that vision of the board. If you still cannot actually do checkmate efficiently, that's fine, because you're going to get that as you play more. And also, I'm going to show you guys uh, specific methods that you can use to deliver checkmate. Like a formula that if you learn it uh, and you follow the steps, it's going to be checkmate no matter what. But before we get to that point, uh, you have to keep playing, you have to keep understanding how your pieces move, and we have to go over the three rules that I mentioned in the last class. We have to go over promotion, castling, and ampersand. So let's get to it. The first one has to do with the pawns, and that one is promotion. So what is promotion? Well, let me put this king over here, this king over here, and I'm going to bring two pawns on the board. So we already know that pawns are not that powerful. They can only move straight forward. They only capture diagonally one step. But there is uh, a privilege that pawns have. And that privilege is that if any of the pawn makes it to the other side of the board, that pawn could become another piece. And that's what we call promotion. So basically the pawn uh, could become a rook, a bishop, a knight, or a queen. And you're going to see what I mean. In this position, we only have the kings with a pawn each. And the only way for them to actually uh, win the game, they have to promote into a queen or uh, a rook and then deliver checkmate. So this is how it happens. I want to get here as quickly as I can. So instead of going one step, I'm at the very beginning. I have it moved, so I could go two steps. Then the black pieces move two steps. And this is just a race to promote and get your um, peas first. So we got to the end and notice how the computer is asking me if I want the bishop, rook, knight, or queen. In most cases, we're going to ask for the queen. The queen is the most powerful piece. Some specific cases you want to under promote to a knight, bishop, or rook. Uh, but it's very important that I highlight this because when you play online, uh, these are the only options you get. When you play in person, you need to remember that the pawn cannot remain a pawn. Once you get to the end, he needs to become something else. But the pawn also cannot become a king. We cannot have two kings of the same color on the board. So I'm going to choose my queen. And there we go. And now this queen is so powerful that when the black pawn promotes, let's say he gets a queen too. Now my queen can go diagonally all the way and capture that queen. And now the white pieces should be able to do checkmate with the queen and the king. So that's what promotion is all about. Let me bring all of the pieces on the board. And let me give you another example. This example is going to be a little bit uh, of an extreme, but just to make uh, my point. So let's say I move this pawn forward. The black pieces move the knight. And I keep going. Then they move this pawn. And I move one more step. Again, here I know they could take me. But just for the sake of this example, let's say they move this bishop. Now I'm going to take this pawn. Again, they could take me, but let's pretend they move this pawn up. And now my pawn could take either the bishop or the rook. Either way, I'm going to make it to the end of the board. So I'm going to go for the rook. And look how, again, uh, they asked me to choose a queen, a knight, rook, or bishop. It doesn't really matter if you have a queen already on the board or rooks, or knights, or bishops, you could have another queen of the board. And as a matter of fact, if all of these pawns make it to the end, which is really difficult, or very un un unlikely, but if that happened, then you're going to have so many more, more queens. So that's what promotion is, guys. It only works for pawns. Any of the other pieces could make it all the way to the other side, and nothing changes. But pawns, they could promote into a bishop, knight, rook, or queen. So... With that being said, I think it's time to move on to the next rule.
this next rule um, has to do with the king and the safety of the king actually and let me actually remove all of the pieces like I did before and just leave the king and the rooks at the squares that they um, that they start so castling occurs uh, with the king and one of the rooks uh, and this is the move that we do to put the king in safety but let me show you how it works so you're going to choose one of the rooks to do castling with the king and this is the only time when the king is going to move two steps he, he always moves one step at a time well when castling he can do two uh, this is the only time when two pieces move at the same time in chess and this is the only time when a piece could jump over another piece and it's not the knight so for castling you're going to move your king towards the rook that you choose in this case I'm going to go towards this rook and I'm going to move the king two steps that's how it works two steps and then the rook moves over the king and that's castle. So all of this happens in one turn. So king and, and, and rook, they sort of swap and that's how you castle. I could also do it to the other side, but it's also going to be two steps. So it was one, two, to the other side, it's gonna go one, two. The rook is the one that travels a little bit further. So I go one and two, and then the rook goes over the king. That's how we castle. Now, there are a few rules that we need to remember. For castling, you cannot have moved the king or the rook that you're going to use. So let's say this king at some point moved up, and then we put it right back. Well, that king can never castle for the remaining of the game. You lost the right to castle. Same thing. If this rook at some point moved, and even if you bring it back, you cannot use that rook for castling. The king could still castle to the other side, but that rook that moved cannot be used. Also, let's say... We have this king here, we have the queen. Um, let's say the king is put in check. The queen goes over here, check. Well, the king cannot castle if he's being in check. That's a rule. Also, let's say that instead of the queen here, we have the bishop right here. Well, the king cannot castle if he's going through check. Let's say I wanna castle to this side. Well, I can't because technically the king is going through this square which is controlled by the bishop. That would be an illegal move. So I'm not allowed to castle there. So, but in this case, you could just castle to the other side. Also, the king cannot castle if he's going to end up on a square where he's in check. Like if I wanted to go to this side now, one and two, notice that my king would be in check by that rook. So that's not allowed. You cannot put yourself into check. So now you know uh, the rules for um, the king to be able to castle. And there's one more that is pretty obvious, but I would like to highlight it. And for that, let me first remove this rook. That rule is that um, you cannot have any pieces in between the king and the rook. It has to be clear for, the, for them to be able to castle. So let's say I have a bishop over here. I could castle to this side, but not to this side. So it would require for me to just move the bishop out first. Maybe they move the king. And now... I could go ahead and castle. Okay, so that's it. That's what castling means. Now, let me bring all of the pieces on the board uh, for you to see with all of the pieces. And by the way, um, I'm going to talk so much about castling because this is something that you're supposed to do at the beginning of the game every time. You develop your knights and bishops, and soon after, you're going to put your king in safety to move him away from the center. But let me give you uh, this example with all of the pieces on the board. So we move the pawns. Immediately, I'm going to try to develop this knight and this bishop to be able to castle. If I wanted to castle to the other side, I'm going to have to move three pieces instead because the queen is also in the way of the king and this rook. So I move my knight, then the bishop, and now, look, I'm ready to castle. And by, and by doing this, my king is walking away from the center and it's going to be on the side of the board protected by three pawns the knight, the pawn, and this rook can now come over and start putting pressure to attack this king who's still in the center. Now, if I go uh, a few more moves, maybe I can show you the black pieces castling in this case. So I'm on purpose trying to castle the king to this side. So now they could just go one and two. And notice how the computer does the rest for me. I just need to put the king one and two here and the rook came over and castled. That's it. Again, the idea is to have your king in a safer place 
and also help the root come from the corner all the way to, to the center. So one more time, if it's confusing, just like promotion, don't worry, we're going to talk so much about these uh, rules in, in future lessons. Okay, so then let's move on to the last rule that we have for today, and that one is ampersand. Ampersand also has to do with pawns. This one, to be honest, you don't get it so much in your games, and for now I just want you to be aware of it. So here we go, let's say I move this pawn up two steps, the black pieces move this knight, then I move my pawn. Well, the, the book definition says that if you have one of your pawns on the fifth rank and one of your opponent's pawn moves two steps and land next to you, you can actually capture the pawn. Now, let me rewind that. So if this pawn moved one step, can we capture it? Yes. We could just go one step diagonally, that's how the pawn captures normally, good. But if this pawn moves two steps, then we can now move to the side and capture, but thanks to ampersand, we can capture diagonally anyways. And technically this happens because this pawn, even though he moved two steps, since he's at the very beginning, he technically went through this square before he could get here. So you're allowed to do it. It works for this pawn in this case, but also for this pawn. He's going to move two steps and land right next to your pawn. So let me, oh, actually, let me go back. And one and two. Now I could do ampersand. Now, the only thing to remember here is that you have to do ampersand if you want to do it. You don't have to do it. But if you wanted to do it, you have to do it right away on the spot. If I, let's say I want to do check first. I'm going to bring my bishop here, check. Then they block the check. And now I try to do ampersand, I'm not allowed to do it. It has to be on the spot. So that's it. So that's uh, the book definition. But the way I break it down for many of my students is almost the same, but just a little bit different. Don't worry too much about the fifth rank. Just know that if any of your opponent's pawns moves two steps and lands next to you, those are the two conditions. He had to move two steps and he has to land next to one of your pawns. Well, you could do ampersand. That's a rule. So now let me just to finish with ampersand, let me do it from black's perspective. So let me start with the white pieces. White pieces always go first. Then they move this pawn. Let's say I go here. They move again. And now if I move this pawn or this pawn two steps, they could do ampersand. Like look, go one and two. I went two steps and I landed next to the pawn. So he could do ampersand. It's very important that you you realize this pawn is not on the fifth rank, uh, it's number four, but from black's perspective, that would be first, second, third, fourth, fifth rank. So it tends to be a little bit confusing, but if you just remember that if one of your opponent's pawns moves two steps and lands next to you, then you could do a passant. That should be way easier. You don't have to worry so much about what rank he's on and, and things like that. So again, guys, I know you don't have to tell me this rule is a little bit more confusing, but don't worry. I just wanted you to be aware of them. Now, castling and promotion, I really need you to, to, to understand them before we move on. So if you still feel a little bit confusing about uh, castling, there's something that you could do. Just set up the, the, the board and remove all of the pieces except for the king and the rook. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take them all of the board, leave the king and the rooks on the original squares and practice castling. So I'm going to take them all out. So here we go. Okay, so they're the original square. If I want to castle to this side, the king moves one, two, and then the rook goes over it. That's it. Let me put it back. I go to the other side, one and two, and the rook goes over it. And that's it. If you do this a few times, trust me, you're going to get the hang of it. So I'm going to see you guys in the next class. And you're, we're going to put all of these together. We're going to play another game. Uh, and you're going to see me actually this time using promotion, castling, and passant if it happens. So I'll see you next time.